Hello, welcome to Pursuit of Perfect System. My name is Terry Ellis. I'm an audio reviewer and a professional Dirac Live calibrator. Thank you for joining me for the review conclusion of the Audio Lab 6000A and 6000N hi fi components, which you can see there to my left. Now, this has been a four part video series, and in each part, I've tried to cover and look at different aspects of the product's performance and interaction. In the last video, I'm concentrated mostly on the software or the app the DTS PlayFi app control mechanism of the Audio Lab 6000N. So in this video, I want to look more closely at both products' hardware and then talk more about the sound quality of both of them. Audio Lab are a UK-based hi-fi manufacturer. They're actually based in really the hi-fi Silicon Valley of the UK, Cambridgeshire. They was formed in the 1980s and soon built a reputation for high quality products and high-end designs. In 1997, the company changed names to Tag McLaren Audio and some of you might be more familiar with that name. And in 2004, Audio Lab joined the IAG or the International Audio Group, which is a portfolio of some very prestigious brands such as Quad, Wharfdale, Mission, Luxman and obviously Audio Lab. In recent years, Audio Lab have released some very successful products in their DAX and their iconic 8000 range. But the 6000 range is the company's entry level products designed to provide great sound quality, great flexibility and affordable, realistic real world prices. There are three products in the range, the 6000 CD transport, the 6000 a amplifier and the 6000N, the wasn't the wireless audio network streaming player. Now you'll see common design choices and factors across all three of these products, but they've been designed in such a way that they are flexible, that they are stand out in their own right, and that they can be used in any number of different hi-fi systems, situations in different ways, personal preferences and tastes. Now with the intro out of the way, let's take a closer look at the two Audio Lab products. Let's start with the 6000A because I think that is the core product of this 6000 range. It's a 50 watt per channel class AB integrated amplifier and if we look at some internal shots of the amplifier you'll see a 200 VA toroidal transformer and you'll also see 60,000 microfarads of capacitance reservoir. There has been lots of attention to detail paid with the amplifier's design and also the pre-amplifier's design to keep noise down. When I tested the 6008 as a standalone amplifier, I was really impressed with just how clean the sound of it was, and it had very good control over my Kef reference speakers that I use for reviews. 6008 offers more than this. It has a built-in DAC based on the ESS Sabre 32-bit reference DAC chip range using the ES9018 DAC chip. The 6000A also features a moving magnet phono stage, and the 6000A also features a headphone amplifier, which is much better than I expected it to be. Coupled with that, there is a home cinema bypass option, which means the 6000A can be easily integrated into a hi-fi combined with home cinema based system. With the price tag of £599, we are getting a lot of technology here, but I'm glad to report that Audio Lab have not sacrificed on the build quality in order to include all of this for its price point. The 6000A feels really well built, it actually feels quite heavy and sturdy in your hands. I'm particularly impressed with the controls on the front, the rotary controls just have a nice resistance and a nice click to them, they feel very high quality. The display on the front is an OLED based display, it's not a thousand nits and HDR, but it is really clear, really easy to read, even at a bit of a distance. The OLED display on the front of the 6000A is just one of many standout attentions to detail, which I've noticed and appreciated throughout this review period. The remote control that comes with the 6000A, it's plastic, but it feels like it could be almost made of metal, take from that what you will. And the remote control works really responsively when you're changing the volume and entering and using the menus. While we're talking about the menus, turning the selector dial gives us three options of how to use the 6000A, either as an integrated amplifier, 
as a slave power amplifier, maybe for home cinema use, and as a standalone preamplifier. So three different options to create flexibility and upscaling possibilities, still incorporating the 6000A. Pushing the selector control in takes us into the main menu where we have controls for balance, for energy saving options, and I think more interesting and exciting is three different digital filter modes for tailoring the sound of the onboard DAC. I preferred the sound of the 6000A using the phase mode for the DAC. It just created the most easygoing and nicest, most pleasurable listening experience. Using the DAC in fast definitely pushed and emphasized more detail and slow is kind of somewhere in the middle. You can choose your poison to your own personal preferences and obviously system compatibility. I just think that it's a nice thing to have these options included and I appreciate having the choice. The volume control world well, that changes the volume and if you push the volume control in that mutes the amplifier. The selector control cycles through the many different inputs of the 6000A. So let's take a look at the rear so we can see what these inputs are. On the rear we have our power input, speaker cable terminals. Now these look a little bit strange in design but in practice they create a very secure connection even with more esoteric banana plug designs. There's an aerial there for Bluetooth for connecting Bluetooth to the internal DAC section. We have triggers to connect different units together to be powered on all at the same time. There's a USB input for firmware updates and that is also how we connect to the 6000N. There are two optical and two coaxial digital inputs and then we have our typical and expected analog input connections. Pay attention here not to connect to the wrong analog inputs. It's very easy to connect to the power analog inputs by mistake. These are designed for home cinema bypass, which essentially puts the amplifier in full blast. So be careful when you're wiring up the 6000A. I'm not saying I made that mistake, of course not. So what does the Audio Lab 6000A using its internal DAC sound like? Well, it sounds very good. You can clearly tell there's been some serious attentions to detail paid with the amplifier and DAC circuit design, and that results in a very enjoyable, clean and clear presentation. There was a good sound stage with good clarity, good timing, good rhythm, and a nice amount of bass authority and power. For the asking price of £599, considering the Audio Lab 6008 is an amplifier, a headphone amplifier, a phono stage, and a DAC, I do not think you could assemble a set of individual components around that price point that would compete or better the 6008 for overall sound quality. And in that regard, it is quite an exceptional value for money hi fi product. And did I mention the headphone amplifier being really good? Because it is a really good headphone amplifier. That was a real surprise and shock to me, but obviously in a good way. And I really like the fact that when you plug in your headphones, the display on the front of the 6000A shows you that the amplifier is in headphone amplifier mode. That's just another one of those attentions to detail that I mentioned at the start of this video that really impressed me. And I think that's a nice transition from there moving over to talk about the 6000N, because when you connect the 6000N to the 6000A, some of the things from the 6000N are shown up on the 6000A screen, such as maybe the sample rate of the music you're listening to. Again, that's just another one of those little attentions to detail that impressed me. So the 6000N, the wireless audio streaming network player, which is essentially a wireless hi-fi music streamer and a network music player combined into one product designed to play music from your favorite streaming services such as Spotify, Tidal, Cobuzz, Amazon Music, Deezer, and a whole host of others. It will also go and hunt on your network and find any music stored on NAS drives or similar. I don't have any music stored like that, so it wasn't able to find anything here on my network. The 6000N visually is quite a plain unit. We have an LED, we have the power on and off button, and we have six preset button. The integration of the LED is actually quite cool because if you use the 6N via a network cable, then it stays red. If you use the 6000N over wireless, then that LED turns white. So it's very clear and obvious which 
method of data transfer you'll be using and if you plug in a network cable to the 6000 then it will also default to using that. The six preset buttons are a fantastic way to shortcut yourself to your music. Imagine the situation you come home from work, you just want to put on some music while you unwind, while you cook the dinner, while you go and jump in the shower. All you need to do is press one of the six preset buttons which you can save to pretty much anything, an album, a song, a playlist, an internet radio station, and within seconds your system's up and playing music. Assigning the preset buttons couldn't be any easier, and I went into detail about how you do that in the last video, concentrating on the control and software aspect of using the Audiolab 6000N. And now it's in that video that I actually made quite a big mistake and I need to hold my hands up and bring this to your attention. Now I made two reviewer cardinal sins. I made an assumption and then I didn't confirm or check that assumption before I went to print with the review or essentially made the video live. In that video I mentioned that there was a known issue with the six preset buttons on the front of the 6000N and after I created that video I spoke to Audio Lab and they actually said that that is not the case, there isn't a known issue. So I want to hold my hands up and apologise to Audio Lab for doing that and obviously apologise to you if that information was misleading in any way. I think there's two things to take out of that. The first one is that with products like this, any hi-fi network-based streamer. There are three things that are important here, the hardware, the software, and the network. And you know, a glitch can happen on any three of these, and then quite often we point the finger at the hardware, and that's not always fair and the right thing to do. And I think the second thing to take out of it is that it shows that my reviews are completely impartial and that the manufacturers don't have any influence or say in what I say as part of these reviews, and I am trying to be 100% honest with how I feel about the products. With that mistake hopefully cleared up, let's move on with the review. Looking at the rear of the 6000N, there are two Wi-Fi aerials, an Ethernet socket, two USB connections, one for updates and the other to link to the 6000A, trigger connections, and now the interesting bit an optical and an SPDIF digital outputs. These you would expect, but as you can see, there is also analog outputs. That's because the 6000N has the same digital or DAC section as the 6000A, making the 6000N a more flexible product. And everything that I said, sound quality wise about the 6000A, you can carry that all over to the 6000N as well. On the inside, the circuitry is very similar to the other 6000 range of products. For example, the power supply in the 6000N is the same as the power supply in the 6000 CD transport, which means we get a proper hi-fi design using a toroidal based transformer for the power supply of this 6000N. We're not seeing the very often and typically used external laptop style power brick, which is so often seen in these hi-fi streamer type products costing, you know, from this price up to significantly more. The 6000N is controlled via the free to download DTS PlayFi app. Now I went into serious detail about how this all works and how you control the 6000N in the last video of the series. In the main, I have found the integration and ease of use of the DTS PlayFi app to be excellent. Now I'm sure using different control hardware, and by that I mean different phones and maybe different tablets, the experience may vary slightly. I was using a Samsung Galaxy S9 Plus phone throughout this whole review period. Now the experience using my phone wasn't totally perfect, but it was perfectly good enough. DTS PlayFi is a very easy control app to learn how to use, and in the main, it is an excellent app. And I know DTS being a huge company, I'm sure there'll be continual development and refinement of the control app to make this a better user experience going forward. Sound quality of the 6000N. Now this is the bit you're probably most interested in. I'm pretty sure Audio Lab set out to create the best sounding wireless hi-fi streamer that you can buy under 500 pounds. And with a price tag of 449 pounds, you'll have some money left over to buy your partner a box of Maltesers to offset the fact that you're spending money on your hi-fi again. Comparing the sound quality of the different music streaming services, you can clearly hear that Spotify for free sounds better than Amazon Music for free. And going up to Kobuz and even the high resolution music that you can stream via that, you can clearly hear where well, that's an improvement 
over the other two. And the reason I've brought that up, and I think the reason that's very important, is because if you are a Cobuzz Music subscriber, the 6,000N is not gonna shortchange you for your 25 pounds monthly subscription. In saying that, listening to Spotify playlists from their free music offerings, I was really impressed by how these sounded through the 6,000N. Listening to music from the noughties and R&B music from the noughties, I was really shocked and surprised by just how good the 6,000N sounded. In fact, it made me think, are Spotify goosing these music tracks to try and make them sound better? Maybe it's just how the 6,000N processes the MP3 data, or maybe it's something to do with the DTS PlayFi app and how it integrates with Spotify via Spotify Connect. Who knows? But all I can say is it was really enjoyable and good fun listening to those playlists. For critical listening, I did move over to the paid for £25 a month subscription of Cobuzz. And you can clearly hear where well, that's a more refined presentation if you compare same tracks between the, the two different services. I'm sure for most sub users of the 6000N that are probably paying for Spotify Premium or maybe a Tidal subscription, that they're gonna feel totally happy with the sound quality of those music streaming services through the 6000N. So my final thoughts of the Audio Lab 6000A and the 6000N, they've been really interesting products to spend time with. They've actually got me thinking about using hi-fi in different ways and got me thinking about the benefits of streaming services and certainly internet radio much more than I ever have before. Having the two of them up here in my office and listening to them while I've been working, that's been a really, really interesting one. And one of the other attentions to detail that's really impressed me is that when I make a phone call or when I receive a phone call, the DTS PlayFi app will mute the music until that phone call is finished and then it carries on playing the music. Something like that's really simple, but again, a really lovely attention to detail that I've appreciated. I'm pretty sure with the 6000 range, Audio Lab have set out to create a range of products that are the best sounding and most flexible products at their price points. And do I feel that they have achieved that? Well, that'd be a difficult one for me to answer, and if I did, it would be very hypocritical because I just haven't listened to enough hi-fi around this price point. But do I feel that these products offer good value for money at their price points? 100% yes, I do. I think as standalone products, the 6000A and the 6000N offer fantastic value for money, and loads of flexibility and ways to integrate them into different systems. And when you look at the pair of them together, for under a thousand pounds, I think as a solution, it will make a lot of audio files very happy and it's a fantastic way to start a serious hi-fi audio file journey. So I hope you've enjoyed this review conclusion and I hope you've enjoyed this review video series. If you enjoyed that video, make sure you hit that thumbs up button. We really appreciate that. Make sure you subscribe to the channel if you'd like to see more hi-fi headphones and home cinema based video content. Also make sure to go and visit our website for hot news, reviews and more. Hope you've enjoyed this video. Thanks very much for watching and I'll see you soon. Take care.